So I went to the store and I got a bunch of these 99 cent bandanas in all different colors. And they're 100% cotton. Is it high quality quilting cotton? No, but you know what? People used to make quilts out of flower sacks. So I'm a believer in using what I have, experimenting with new things. So let's give this a shot. Let's see what we can make with a bunch of bandanas. They were 99 cents, but look at all of these colors. They are so pretty. And so I think I've come up with an idea. So the first thing I did is I just ironed them all to see actually how square they are. And you know, they're about, I don't know, 20, 22, 23 inches square, something like that. And when I say square, I'm using that term extremely loosely because they are not square and that's okay. But after I've ironed them, I've discovered that even though the actual bandanas aren't square, the design on them is very square. So the first thing I'm gonna do is square these up and make sure that I am starting with a square piece. So since I know that the design is square on here, I'm going to use the design to square up this bandana. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these little black crosses that are along the edge and I'm gonna line that up with an, a line on my ruler. So I'm using the one inch line and I can just finagle that fabric under my ruler to make sure that that is all lined up like it's supposed to be disregarding where the edge is because as you can see it's kind of wavy and it's not square but again i know the design is square so i can use the design to line everything up and that looks pretty good so then i'm just gonna slice the edge on all four sides so I know that is square to the design. I'm gonna do that on all four sides. So now that I know I've got my design centered in the middle, I'm, I'm, I also know that I wanna start with a 20 inch piece of fabric. So I'm going to fold this in half, which is super easy to do because you've got your design, which is square in the middle. And so I can fold that in half according to the design. And then I'm gonna fold it again into fourths, which again is easy to do because I've got this center design to guide me. And I can fold that into fourths like so. And then I'm gonna cut this using my 10 inch ruler square and I'm gonna cut this to 10 inches and I'm gonna line up the folded sides with my 10 inch ruler, making sure that it is folded as squarely as possible. And there might be an easier way to do this, but this is the way my brain works to square something up. All right, that looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna cut these sides, a little excess off of these sides, like this. And then so when I open this back up, I should have a 20 inch square piece of fabric that is with the design is centered in the middle. So I'm gonna do that to all of my bandana pieces and start with a 20 inch square. So after doing a couple, I realized that I can just skip the first step. And as long as I know that the design is square in the middle, I can just fold that into fourths according to the design in the middle. And I can line that up. It's really easy because it's so symmetrical. The design is so symmetrical. So I can just fold that into fourths according to the design. And then I can use my ruler and just line it all up. 
as best I can by the fold and then use my 10 inch lines on my ruler to get that as square as possible. Then I can cut off those edges like so. And that should give me the same result instead of squaring it up that first step that I did before. So this will give me still a 20 inch piece of fabric without going through the first squaring up by the design. So, duh, you know, our practice makes progress, right? Yay. So I've got my bandanas here. They are all cut 20 inches square. I have paired them up with each other. I've got one light and one dark one sitting right on top of each other. And so the way I'm gonna cut this up is I'm going to cut two cuts that are three and a half inches on each side. And then I'm gonna go this way and cut two cuts that are three and a half inches on each side. So I'm gonna take my ruler, measure three and a half inches, one, two, three and a half. And I'm gonna put my weight on there so it doesn't budge. So there is my first cut three and a half inches and I'm not going to move it. It's hard to see where it cut, but I'm not going to move it. I'm going to leave it where it is. That's important. One, two, three and a half. Sometimes it's hard to see, but that's okay. So there's my next three and a half. And I'm just going to go around my cutting mat and cut three, two, three and a half inch cuts on each side. And if you have a huge rotating cutting mat, that would be super helpful. But I, my rotating cutting mat isn't this big. <laughs> separate these to create kind of a checkerboard and I'm going to duplicate it next door. So I'm going to take off the red one here and I'm going to leave the red one here and take off the white and I'm recreating the same pattern over on this side like that. There we go. And this one. <laughs> Christmas song in my head. Don't like that. All right. So that is our design. That's so cool. I'm going to leave this exactly how it is. And when we sew these together, we're going to use the web method. And so if I swing the camera over, 
excuse my light, you'll see I've got the mirror image on this side. You can see that there's a little shadow in the way, but it's exactly the same except a mirror image of this one. So these are gonna be my first two blocks. Now I've changed the orientation of the camera because I want you to see things the way I'm seeing them. And that's when this webbing technique will make sense. So with any quilt block where you have patches, this is 25 patch, really, if you look at it this way, I think. Uh, there's five columns and five rows. But you can do this with a, anywhere from a four patch up to, I guess, theoretically, you could make a whole quilt like this if you had enough space to lay it out. But what we're gonna do is we always start in the top left, sewing the first two columns together. So I'm going to lay these over like this, the first two columns, and they will get sewn right down here like this. I'm gonna sew right down. I'm not, I'm gonna do them one at a time, but once I sew one, I'm not going to take it off my machine. So I'm gonna start with the first two that are in the top left. And then I'll grab the second two, just keeping them in order. My machine has a squeak, so I apologize for that. Here is the third one, and I'm just making sure that it's nice and lined up. And the fourth. Make sure you don't change the orientation of the blocks. And here are the last two in that column. Now, once I've got all these sewn together, I'm just going to take it back to the beginning and I'm going to finger press these. All of them get finger pressed to the darker one. And I'm just going to go down to the next pair and switch the seam allowance so that they are being pressed to the dark side. And I do this with each round. Just a good finger press. These bandanas seem to finger press really, really easily. They must have some sizing in them. A little starchy. I don't starch. I've never starched a fabric in my life. That might come as a shock. So once I've got all of these opened up, I am just going to take, I'm gonna move you. I'm just going to take the second, the third row, which is right here, these pieces are a little longer, and I'm going to take that first piece and I'm going to turn it over and add it to the first piece here. Make sure my camera angle is right that you can see that. I'm just going to add that to the first row starting back at the top. And the next one in the row, in the column. So I'm basically sewing them together the exact way that they're laying. Here's the big center piece. Flip it over, make sure it's lined up. And the next one goes here. So throughout this whole block, I never have to lift my needle up at all or cut my thread. Until I get to the end of a, a row. So I'm gonna go back to the top and finger press all of my seams to the darker fabric. And they'll, they're all connected and it's really quite handy and quite easy. 
make sure everything's pressed to the darker side. And now I'm ready for my next two rows. And I, hopefully you get the idea. I'm gonna go ahead and sew those and then we'll see what the block looks like. So now you can take that first row and flip it over and sew all the way down, making sure your seams are nested. And I did videotape this, but then I realized that my video stopped halfway through. So I will go to the second one. Once you've got that first row sewn on, since everything is already in place and the way it needs to go, then you can take that and flip it over to the second row or column. I like to make sure that I get my fingers in there and make sure my seam is nested. And I usually try to hold my finger on that first seam while I put it under my needle. Got a little gap in my sewing table here. All right. And then put that under my needle and I like to hold that first seam in place while I sew to it. And then once my needle passes that first seam, then I go to the next seam, make sure it is nested and you can totally feel whether it is or isn't. And sew to that one and then bring my fingers to the next one making sure my seams are nested to the dark side and everything is lined up nicely. And then the last seam here, making sure everything is pressed to the dark side. Got a little extra little thing hanging off there. I wanna clip my thread. Okay. And I just hold on to that seam because I know it's nested. And then match up your ends. And sew all the way down. So now I've got two of them all put together. So now I just bring it over and fold it over to the next one and just go down like that until you've got the whole thing sewn. this method because everything just stays where it's supposed to be it's already lined up it's put into place now all I have to do is take this to the ironing board and press it but I didn't have to leave my sewing machine my are already laid out on my cutting table right next to me so I don't have to get up and I have this whole block sewn and it was so easy and I love doing this method because you don't lose the orientation of your pieces. The pieces stay in the place where they're supposed to be. And this quilt block looks pretty cool. I'm gonna go press it up right now. So here's the quilt. It's, it's pretty awesome because I love the way that the original design still shows and it just looks like a bandana except a two color bandana now instead of a single color bandana. So I love the way everything fit together and pressing to the dark side on everything just made all the seams nest perfectly so well. And so I just, yeah, putting a light with the dark like that gave it a great look. And so I used half of my blocks to make this lap size quilt and I decided I'm going to do something extra to make another lap size quilt. So check out what I decided to do right here. For the second quilt, I decided to take it a step further and I'm going to take my, my pieces that I've sewn together and I'm gonna cut this into fourths. And so in order to do that, I'm gonna measure the center square and it is five and a quarter. And so in order to get that in half, I'm going to cut 2.75, 2.75 inches 
from this seam of the center square and I'm just gonna line that up with the seams there and you can also see because the 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 pattern that's printed on here you know if you're cutting it down the halfway mark and I'm just gonna cut this into fourths and then I'm gonna mix up the colors so this will turn this block into four nine patches I'm just gonna do the same on this side. I'm going to measure 2.75 from that seam line that'll cut this about right in half. And if it's not exact, I mean, it, it'll all work out, I promise. So I've got that now cut into fourths like this. And then I'm just going to mix these up with the other colors. So this just turns this into a basic nine patch, but you want to line it up so that these, so that the pattern still comes together. So I'm going to mix these up with some other ones that I have cut and it'll just, you know, turn it into four patches and just mix them up. But the pattern will still come together that are in the original bandanas. So here is quilt number two. I think it's super colorful, it's super cool. And they're just, just the nine patches, four of them put together, but they still retain the same pattern of the original bandana, which I think is pretty cool. I love that. I have eight of these blocks left over so I may incorporate them uh, in the four corners of a border maybe. I really haven't decided what I wanna do for a border yet, uh, if at all, I'm not sure. I may do like a white strip and then a black strip or something like that to reflect the black and white that makes the design of all of the bandanas. I'm really not sure. Let me know in the comments what you would consider doing for a border for the for these so i'm i'm i love this it's super colorful and it's great for like a beach blanket or a picnic blanket so there you have it the two quilts i made from 26 bandanas all 99 cents a piece so it didn't cost me much let me know which one you like better if you like the content here please feel free to like and subscribe. I would love to have you in my tribe and all the best to you. Keep sewing. Have fun. Bye-bye.